Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. We have moved from the gloom and despair of the people in exile to a still, somewhat somber time of preparation and reflection, remembering all of God's steadfast faithfulness. We're getting a lot closer to the shepherds, angel choirs, and yes, wise men. We are even getting closer to a little town called Bethlehem. But for now, we begin in Nazareth and in the hill country near Jerusalem, which is also near Bethlehem. A mystery is about to unfold. Yes, friends, a mystery is about to be revealed. You might say, mystery? What mystery? Everyone knows that Christmas is coming. The stores, the advertisements flooding the internet and the airwaves. People wearing Santa hats and buttons to remind us as if we could miss it. Music on the radio, even travel plans despite the pandemic. And you know, I don't disagree, but the reason for the season is still a mystery for many people. Why do we celebrate a jolly man riding on a sleigh pulled by flying reindeer who comes down the chimney? Of course, if he were in Florida, he would be in a powerboat pulled by a group of dolphins. But I digress. Well, truthfully, we really don't. Or rather, we, we celebrate the coming of one far greater than any jolly old elf. So, if we looked at the historic beginnings of the St. Nicholas tale, we'll discover that the gift-giving saint is linked back to a third century monk who was noted for his care of people in need. As believers, we welcome this time with celebration, with music and worship, with charity, with acts of mercy. Always we are called to give glory to God. And yes, we're called to do that in everything that we do in all circumstances. But at this time of year, we especially remember with thanksgiving and joy God's action in sending Jesus into the world. His only begotten Son, the Son sent to save us, the Son who redeems us, the Son who is the culminating witness of God's love was it because we deserved it, that we could somehow earn our way into heaven. No, friends, we can't. Sin has separated us from God. There is nothing that we can do on our own to gain salvation which is why God was the only one who could do something to restore us. And praise be, he did. He loved us so much that the Son came into the world. A son through the line of David. We heard that promise 
this morning in our Old Testament reading. The house mentioned is not one of stones or brick or jewels, but something infinitely more precious. It would be and is a house, a dynasty, which would be forever in the eternal sun. Paul reminds us of this very thing in those brief verses from the end of Romans. What was hidden has been revealed. What was promised has come to pass. Mary, like her people, was looking for the Messiah. But it had been so long Surely, it would not happen in her lifetime. Then, in an instant, everything changed. An angel appeared to this young woman. And most scholars say that she was between 12 and 14 years of age. Historically, in the Roman Empire, a girl could be betrothed at the age of 10. The angel told her not to be afraid. And this seems to be the standard command for angelic visits. We don't have any idea what they look like, but certainly something about them was terrifying. Or maybe it was less their appearance but the message that they brought. I don't know about you, but hearing a message from someone who lived and served in the presence of God, who was bringing God's own message, that would be more than a little terrifying. How would you react? Fear, trembling, the urge to run as far and as fast as you could? You know, it doesn't take being met by an angel because when you realize that God is asking you to make a radical change to your life, you likely would have a similar reaction. I know I certainly did when I realized, with the help of others, that I was being called into ministry, away from everything that I knew and loved. Back then, I couldn't see what the Lord was calling me to do. I just knew that I was being called called to step out in faith and follow, follow where he was leading me. Now, now looking back, I can see how I was indeed led each step of the way, and I couldn't be any happier. The angel didn't stop with the words of comfort, for he says that Mary has found favor. We don't know what she had done to find favor with God, that favor that the angel was proclaiming. From her own words in the Magnificat, she seems ordinary, very ordinary. But more important for us today is that there is something that we can emulate. Notice what she did. She listened to the message. She didn't interrupt and say, me? I found favor? You've got the wrong person. We might
might even try to name someone else that we think is better qualified, more faithful, more deserving, more holy. We see this in scripture. Moses, Samuel, Jeremiah, Elijah, all those come to mind. Then she raises the obvious problem. She is betrothed, not married. The angel is clearly speaking of a current event. For her, marriage could be a year or even more away. more with wonder than rejection. If we look earlier in Luke and we see what happens with Zechariah, he's told that he's going to be the father of a son. And he scoffs. He, he asks for proof. There's not wonder. It seems to be rejection. Don't you know how old I am? And uh, you might remember that that didn't turn out quite so well for him because he was struck dumb and would remain so until after his son's birth. Gabriel explains to Mary how it will happen, not in great detail, but just that it will happen. Then he offers her the proof that she did not ask for. And maybe it was a case of knowing that she would need the counsel and reassurance of the well-regarded saintly woman Elizabeth, the wife of Zechariah, the priest, who was her cousin, who had once been seen as barren, and now was expecting a son. Finally, he gives her true words of comfort. With God, nothing is impossible. Friends, do we believe that? Or do we look around and, and despair? It's so easy to do that right now, isn't it? Do we trust God? Do we trust his promises? Do we remember that we, too, have each been called by God to be his children. And further, do we do what he calls us to do, both in the big and little things of our lives, following the example of our Lord as we minister to those around us, as we serve others without fanfare or hope of reward? Do we live our lives demonstrating our faith with humility, never with arrogance, but always filled with joy and gratitude? We can look at Mary who responds. She acknowledges her position before God. She calls herself a slave. In Greek, it's the same word if you use it for servant or slave. She accepts the calling on her life to be the mother of Jesus, the mother of the Messiah. Mary's words in our responsive reading are often called the Magnificat. 
They are not said by Mary at the time that Gabriel gives her the news. They aren't even said when she learns that she will be bearing the Messiah or that it's all going to be a miracle. No, 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 no. The angel leaves. Mary goes to her cousin and discovers that, yes, indeed, Elizabeth is pregnant. But it's Elizabeth's words of greeting and affirmation that seem to break open the floodgates of Mary's emotions. We can feel her wonder of how this is possible, not in rejection, not in mere acceptance, not even in fear, but in praise. And yes, that wonder and joy, and it just bursts out. Her position in the society of the day would have been low. Unmarried, a young woman, in a time when older men were the most valued members of society, from a rural community, not a mighty religious center like Jerusalem. And yet somehow, somehow, she was favored, selected to be part of God's transformation and inbreaking into the world. This is God's work, work of restoration, of justice, of mercy. It's also a countercultural act. The mighty are not the ones who will get the good things, but the marginalized. The hungry will be filled instead of struggling against starvation. The powerful will discover what true power is. A new king is coming, yes, of the Davidic line, but so much more than David. Justice will flow like waters cleansing in a baptismal flood. Mercy will be given to those who never, ever hoped to receive it. We are still in a time of waiting. The time is growing short. Not for the day on the calendar when we can wish each other Merry Christmas, but waiting for the return of our Lord and Savior. When he returns, let us all be found doing what he has charged us to do, responding to his call on our lives and using the gifts that he has given us, sharing the good news and shining out with his love to all we need. Amen and Amen. <laughs>